I left here yesterday, I'd come down here and I was working yesterday and the Holy Spirit started bringing this up through me. And I was like, yes, he's pushing this out for today's service. He's pushing this out. Well, this had come up at the schoolhouse on Tuesday night with hope. The hope of his calling. The hope that we may know, that I may know what is the hope of his calling. There's a hope attached to his calling in each of our lives. It's placed, it's the goal setter for our life. Okay? His calling has a hope that's a goal setter for our life, what we've been called to do, what we've been called to be, and what we've been called to have, what we've been called to possess as our inheritance and possess his power. Okay? Amen? Amen. We're seeing this here. Yes. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Um, so, the hope of his calling. Remember that. His calling, his inheritance, his power. His calling. Well, what's his calling? Go to Romans 8. From there, go to Romans 8, the, the manifested Son of God chapter. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. And uh, Casey, feel free to, to uh, give your input because uh, Holy Spirit, and, and this is, uh, he had me text Casey immediately. Casey and I started bouncing what we were hearing both in the Spirit at the same time. It was pretty cool. Uh, and uh, So feel free, Casey, to add to it because you were in on that yesterday. Um, Romans 8, verse, uh, what did I say, no, 28. <clears throat> our calling. Here it is. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, so that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. You've been called and your destiny, you've been predestined, you're calling the hope that you may know the hope of what he's called. Well, what is he called? Your, predest your calling has a predestination to it that is to be conformed to the image of his son. Okay? That's our calling. That's our destination. That's God's hope for us all. Do you, you see it? So when our hope agrees with his hope, okay, then we can attach his faith, which he gave us, Gave every measure, gave man a measure of faith, every man a measure of faith, right? And we work with God in hope, faith, and love, and we manifest kingdom, okay? Because, I think it was Casey and I were talking, you're operating in faith, but faith also gives substance to hope. So you have to have a hope in place for faith to give something in substance too. So the hope's got to be there, okay? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and say this. His life right now is in, in, in my cells. His life, his, life. his nature is in my cells. Go ahead and look at your hand. His life is in my flesh. It's in the cells. In my hand. In my body. His life. His life is in my tissues. In my bones. His life. His life. Be. Be in me, in me now, now, according to your word, Father. According to your word, Father. For I've been given over to death. For I've been given over to death. For Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. So, so that His, that his life, life may be, may be manifested, manifested in my flesh. In my flesh. It's manifested. It is manifested right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Life be. Life be in me. In me. Symptoms. Symptoms. Leave my body. Leave my body. No. No. I will not tolerate you. I will not tolerate you. No more. No more. Go. Go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We applied hope, faith, and some of you I have are we dealing with symptoms in here this morning. Okay? So we just attacked on it. Alright? With the devil not seeing it coming. Switch gears, so to speak. Okay. Alright? Strategic, uh, strategic warfare. Amen, Jordan. What we talking about that? Okay. Where are we at now? Let me get, get 
this is back inside. 29. We were at 29. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Joe. 29. For those whom he foreknew, he foreknew you were going to receive your calling. He knew it. You're God's elect. You now become God's elect because he foreknew you were going to receive it. He predestined to be conformed. You, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brothers. He's our brother. And those whom he predestined, he also called. The hope of his calling. Here it is working in. He also called. And those whom he called, he also justified or made righteous. And those whom he justified made righteous, he also glorified. Do you see that there? Yeah. The, that we may know the hope. The hope. That we may know the hope. Okay? Of his calling. Yeah. Are we seeing it? We may know the hope of his calling. Conform to his image. Now also in that power prayer... Right? His calling, his inheritance, which is in this, with the saints, right? Well, let's go to Colossians 1.12. Colossians 1.12. Colossians 1.12. Familiar scripture here. His calling. His inheritance. Thank you, Lord. One twelve. Given thanks to the Father, who has enabled us to be partakers in the inheritance. There's a, there, there's in the power of prayer that you may know that you may know His inheritance, the, the riches, the glorious riches of His inheritance, of the saints in where, in light, right? You're in light. Saints in light. That you may know. Saints in light. Okay? That's our position. Now, going back to what the Holy Spirit was just revealed to us, from there go to 1 John, and we'll finish. 1 John. 1 John. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Praise you. I'll bust off. Oh, shit. i to bust off. That's for me. Thank you, Lord. Um, 1 John 1 and 5. This, then, is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, yet walk or regulate our life, in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So, what are we regulating our life to? We're checking it in here. I guess the, the Holy Spirit's checking it in with all of us here this morning. Make sure your life is regulated, not in darkness, because the devil's going to try and pull you out of the light. He don't want you in the light. He wants you in the darkness. The battle's in the soul realm. Okay? It's in the soul realm. But if we walk or regulate our life in the light, well, how do you do that? Like what Jordan says, you do that with your DNA confession. You do that with the seed that you're planting in you. That's how you regulate your life, by what you speak, what you say, how you start your day, what you say in the morning, what you say before you go to bed at night. Okay? That's all working together, being disciplined. We got, bottom line, we got to be disciplined to stay in the light. It's a disciplined life to stay in the light. Okay? Because then if we do that, if we walk and regulate our life in the light, as He is in the light, because God's not moving from the light. He ain't moving. We'd be the one to move, not, not, not Him. We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen? Yeah. Stay in that fellowship. We're cleansed from all sin. Now, Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Okay? So when you do err, you do make a mistake, you do err, you know. He just got through saying in verse 7, don't walk in the darkness, don't stay in the darkness, don't stay in sin. Get out of it. Why are you camping out there? Amen. You have no business camping out there. Get out of it. Okay? All right? I mean, we're, all, we're working on something. We're working, we're growing. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But let's keep reading. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We stay positioned in the light, in the glorious riches and his inheritance with, with all the saints, right? Back to the power of prayer. Forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. All right? Right? Now watch this. Keep going, though. Yeah. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you do not sin. Now here's the purpose. I'm writing this to you. All that I said right now, I'm writing this to you so you don't sin. Yeah, you were living in sin. Yeah, you are in darkness, but come in the light. The fellowship's in the light. Stay in the light. Regulate yourself in the light. Because there's a hope to your calling is in the light. Okay? You're called, you're justified, you're glorified in the light. Your, your fellowship with him is in the light. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. All right? Yes. I am writing these things to you so that you do not sin. But if, if, there's the if word, it's a choice. You chose to sin. But if you say, if, but if anyone does sin, we do have an advocate with the Father. So if you, you do make a mistake, or if you do to stay and continue to sin, okay, you do have an advocate with the Father, but you know, <coughs> wouldn't stay camped out in sin and live in that sin. Because the fellowship is in the light. Okay. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He's the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world. It's been paid for for the whole world. By this we know that we know Him. How do you know you know Him? If we keep His commandments. Remember? Love and obedience. We talked about last week. Love and obey a little bit. If you love someone, you obey. And don't you say that at the altar when you get married? That's in your vows. Love and obedience go together. Whoever says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. That's Bible. You say you're born again, but you're not keeping the truth. Are you born again? <laughs> That's just what the Bible, I'm just reading what it says. Okay. But whoever keeps his word truly has the love of God perfected in him. By this we know we are in him. Whoever says he remains in him ought to walk as he walked. So that's your purpose. That's your calling. That's the hope. Going back tying into the hope of what you've been called. You're to, we're called to walk as he walked. Okay? Do you see all this? Do you see the, the, the hope that God has placed on us? He's hoping that we get conformed to the image of Jesus and walk as he did and stay in the fellowship with him. Don't go out to the darkness. Okay? The darkness can't overcome the light. Light overcomes darkness. Right? John 1, 5. All right, let's look at that. John 1, 5 and we'll finish. John 1, 5. John 1, 5. You know, and you know, also, thank you, Holy Spirit. Also, remember, if you camp out in sin and you stay in that sin and it's a work of the flesh, it starts out as a work of the flesh, you're tracking demonic attention. Okay? You're drawing demon attention to you. Remember, we did a whole teaching on this with the Nephilim teaching we did? You, you, you get back, and Curry was teaching on this Friday night. He had mentioned this down here with, with DBI. He was saying that. Yeah, you can get someone delivered, but if they go back to what they were doing in the flesh, they're going to draw those demons back to them. Okay? You can control the will of demon, but not the will of the person. Right. right. That's what he was saying. We control the will. The demon can tell the demon to stop, but the person eventually is going to have to stop doing what he's doing. Okay? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that prayer course has been too phenomenal. <coughs> It was, it's been something. Um, where are we? Where are we? Oh, John, 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 thank you, Jacob. John. John. John, uh, 
five. What is it? John five. one five. Thank one you, five. John one five. Let's see this because something we need to uh, get a revelation of here is this. We all, you know, and I, I, I saw this, and Casey had texted this to me. Um, verse three: All things were created through Him. See that all things were created through Him, and He wants back what He created. Because all creation's waiting, right? For the sons, the manifested sons of God, to set them free from bondage. So what he's created has been in bondage. All things were created through him. Do you see that there? I just saw that. Yeah. He wants creation set free. He wants you set free of that, that cough. He wants you set free of that cold. He wants you set free of what's attacking your body. The virus. He wants you set free of it. He wants creation set free. All things were created through him, and without him, nothing was created that was created. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. So there's the life that is in us is the source of the light that comes through us, that radiates through, uh, through us. The life is the, is the kerosene, so to speak. It's the oil in your lamp, okay? It's fueling the light. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. The light shines in darkness, but darkness has not overcome it. It can't overcome it. This is what I heard. It can't overcome it. Sickness and disease is from where? Darkness. It can't overcome the light. Light is in you. Okay? That light overcomes the darkness. So that life be in me, I'm, I'm going right to the source, the fuel source of my light, which is the life. So when we say life be in me now, that darkness, has, it gets overcome. It gets defeated. Amen. It gets pushed out. Okay? Something we need to... Life be in me. Right? Because light overcomes the darkness. The darkness scatters. Okay? It can't overcome the light. Amen? This is all going on inside of us with the kingdom of God in us that we may know, okay? That we may know the hope to which he's called us. That we may know his inheritance, his, glory, his glorious riches in the inheritance and saints. That we may know his power that is toward us, to those who believe, for us and in us. Amen? Amen. Did I miss anything there, Casey? Okay? So we need to hear that this morning. Up for it before the seed script. Okay? Amen? Amen. Okay? Yes, Jake. I was thinking about something. Um, you know, when you're in the dark, then even a little flashlight doesn't brighten it up as much as it would if you would have total light. And uh, so, so when, when you're in dark and turn on a flashlight, you still struggle with, see there's still darkness around. And so yeah, I'm picturing that as, as uh, you know, you're still in danger. Gotcha. You have this little light around you, but you're still in danger because you can't see what's beyond that light. But if you get a bigger light, you know, there's a little more, you can see a little better, a little right. more, right. brighter light. Right. And But there's still danger. And so, so you, you will always struggle with danger. You will always get attacked. By the enemy, if you decide that you will uh, walk in darkness, you you may have a little bit of that that you're trying to light it with, but you uh, if you stay in it, you, you still will get attacked, and you will you your surroundings are you know open to the enemy. I, I was just picturing that as you were talking. I, that just came you know so clear to me about how, and and so. So if we choose to stay in the darkness, trying to to light it up with a little light, uh, you know, what are the chances of us, you know, with the devil? <laughs> this little light of mine. 
That's good. <laughs> and so, so why not just go in the total light, the sunshine? Like once the sun comes out, it's total light everywhere. That's so why good. not stay in that? That's good. Then you can see everything. That's real right. good. Clearly. <laughs> and, and that what you're speaking lines up with Matthew six. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your light is if your eye is unclear, your whole body will be full of darkness. Therefore, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great? Or how, what's the amount of that darkness that's in you? Right. Okay. Emanation. Emanation. You know, this Holy Spirit. I mean, emanation. Right. This all goes back to having that hope in place. The hope of His calling. We're covering all this. We're, the Holy Spirit's showing us all this because if you have that hope of His calling, His hope of His calling on your life, you're going to line yourself up with this because now you got that goal setter. Right? And you're going to go after it. So by faith, okay, by faith, I'm full of life. By faith, I'm full of life. Life be in me, you know, all in my flesh. Uh, you know, Ellie and I were just talking before service. You got to be whole, whole in the spirit, which you already are. Whole in the soul realm, light be in the soul realm, and in your body, in, like you know, in your flesh. Yeah. Yes, Joe. Um, and kind of like while you're talking, I don't know if someone needs to hear this, but um, you're talking about the power and being in the light and not in the darkness, and um, like we Second uh, Timothy three. Verse 1, it says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And, having, and that's where I was kind of getting to. Um, we can't deny this power. we got to be in the light. You know, We can't be lovers of ourselves and lovers of pleasure. You know, And that's right. I mean, I bet we've all been there. You know, that's like, right. That's why we got to be in that relationship with Him. And, and that goes with, if you hold on to your life, Right? right? What's it in Luke, Luke 8? You, but if you lose your life for my life, it's the higher life. And we were just singing the song, Let My Life Be Lifted High. Because the higher life is the spiritual life. That's what Jesus said. You exchange your fleshly, earthly, you know, for the higher spiritual life. But if you hold on to your earthly spiritual life, you know, you lose your life. So we're going to be lovers of God. Yeah. <laughs> right, amen. Amen. Idols, you know, false yep. idols. Yep. yep. Anybody, anything else there? <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, no, that's good. Okay, I want to invite Carla. She's going to lead us in uh, mm -hmm. DNA, and then we'll dismiss the children. Ooh. Carlo. Carlo. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and dive into this. Amen. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the knowledge of every good thing which is in you in Jesus Christ. Warriors ethos. I will always put the mission first. I will always, always put, put the mission, mission first. first. I will never accept for defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am God's son. I am God's son. I am man's servant. I am man's servant. I am the devil's master. I am the devil's master. Sons of God lead the way. Sons of God lead the way. We are first in and last out. We are first in and last out. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Pray if it's all up to God. Pray if it's all, all up to God. And work if it's all up to me. And work if it's all up to me. I am taking notice. I am taking notice. I am aware of the fact. I am aware of the fact. Jesus, I thank you that I have authority over all the power. 
Jesus, I thank you that I have authority over all the power, ability of the enemy, ability of the enemy. I have power, I have power, authority and ability. Ability over his ability. Authority and ability over his ability. Wherever I meet him, I win. Wherever I meet him, I win. I put my foot on his head and defeat him. I put my foot on his head and defeat him. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I submit, submit my thoughts and actions towards you this day. I submit my thoughts and actions towards you this day. I resist the devil and he flees from me. And he flees from me. I overcome the devil. I overcome the devil. Because greater is he. Because greater is he. In he that is in me than he that is in the world. That is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. That last one was Carla's That's good. personal one. Yes. And she, she worked this week. I'd like to uh, open invitation. Come on up. Uh, someone wants to come up and express their DNA. Come on up. You're more than welcome to. I know there were a couple last week that were thinking about coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I can start with the scripture. Can I, can I start with the scripture? Yeah, sure. I'll start. Just to get us rolling. I'll do a quick one. Someone can come up after me. <laughs> All right. Hey, Amen. That was good stuff. All right. Yeah. All right. I have been crucified. I have been crucified. With Christ. With Christ. Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is no longer I who live. But Christ who lives in me. But Christ, but Christ who lives in me. In me. And the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Who <laughs> loved me and gave himself up for me. And gave himself up for me. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. <laughs> I give my life. I give my life to you. To you. Complete control. Complete control. Over my thoughts. Over my thoughts. And my body. And my body. I will be led. I will be led. By the spirit. By the spirit. And not by the flesh. And not by the flesh. Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I love you. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with your presence, Lord. Fill me with your presence, Lord. Lord, I just want to be filled with you this day. Lord, I just want to be filled with you this day. I am healed. I am healed. I am restored by your blood. I am restored by your blood. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my church. I think you are going to use me this day. You are going to use me. Greater is he. Greater is he. This is in me. This is in me. This is in the world. This is in the world. Amen. Amen. Today. Today. Die to self. Die to self. <coughs> Resist the devil. Resist the devil. Put the flesh down. Put the flesh down. Shut out the world. Shut out the world. Renew the mind. Renew the mind. And feed the spirit. And feed the spirit. Christ in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Greater is he. Greater is he. That is in me. That is in me. Than he. Than he. That is in the world. That is in the world. I give my body. I give my body. A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing. Holy and pleasing. To you. To you. Without spot or wrinkle. Without spot or wrinkle. Without any hesitation. Without any hesitation. Body. Body. Be whole. Be whole. Be healed. Be healed. Be strengthened. Be strengthened. Be rejuvenated. Be rejuvenated. Be restored. Be restored. Body. Body. Generate. Generate. Anything, Anything that I need today. That I need today. Without spot or wrinkle. Without, without spot or wrinkle. Without any hesitation. Without any hesitation. Be whole. Be whole. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I have a scripture 
that I just want to apply to uh, ourselves. Yes. It's Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. I put all my trust in you with my whole heart. I put all my trust in you with my whole heart. I do not lean on my own understanding. I do not lean on my own understanding. In all my ways. In all my ways. I acknowledge you, Lord. I acknowledge you, Lord. And I take your path straight. And I take your path straight. I'm not wise in my own eyes. I'm not wise in my own eyes. But I fear you, Lord. But I fear you, Lord. And I turn away from evil. And I turn away from evil. It's healing to my body. It's healing to my body. And it refreshes my bones. It refreshes my bones. I honor you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. From my wealth. From my wealth. And from the first of my produce. And from the first of my produce. Everything that I, my income. It's all yours. And my barns are filled. My barns are filled. That means my bank account is filled with plenty. And everything is overflowing. Amen. See, you can't do that. I just wanted to show you. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, uh, children, go ahead and be dismissed now. And uh, Casey, if you could, on the way, if you could hit the thermostat and turn the heat back on. <laughs> Would you please? Oh, we're getting a fire going in here ourselves. Amen. You're supposed to be uncomfortable, Tom. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to be uncomfortable. Oh. He's been hanging out with you. Who, me? Yeah. Mike. 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 Yeah. Right, hanging out with me too long. All right, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. All right. All right, let's go to the seed script and we'll uh, get some of this in today. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, um, you know, we're talking about functioning and stewardship. Some of the cool, I don't know if you've seen it online, but he's in the process or his plan is, well, he has to move out of his building. Uh, so he's going to move out of his building. He's looking to buy an acre of land for $10,000. So he's trying to raise ten thousand dollars so to speak so um, want to put that out if you haven't seen it on facebook um, i didn't see that you know, some of you but it's a building on it or they're yeah. gonna put, he's gonna put tents on it oh, okay when do you know so, so he said he wants to buy actually two acres and they're ten thousand six hundred per acre so like we suggested to him start out with one acre and then it was like 14,800 or something that he needed to build a building. But in the interim, he was gonna like put tents up for them to like sleep in and stuff. So. Right. So this starts in January. I think January is his last month there at, at the building that he's in. Okay. That would be free. So. So, and I know I have pictures of the land. He sent us pictures of the land. Yeah. So, you know, if you want, give an offering, you know, you want to label it. You know, some of you have been labeling it to Semakula, to Africa. You know, I'll, I'll separate that as an offering towards the land, towards his land, okay, and send it to him that way via MoneyGram, uh, okay, to help us up to 96 kids, okay. Again, functioning as stewards. Managing God's resources. Okay. All right. I told him I would announce that and pray for him. You know, he carries a lot. Pray for him. He's carrying a lot, so to speak. Okay, functioning and stewardship. Base scripture, Luke 16, uh, 1 and 2, MEV. We'll do a whole teaching on this parable coming up. Okay. All right, next week. <laughs>
I don't know that we'll finish this. We're not going to finish the seed script today. Let's take a look at this. He told his disciples there was a rich man who had a steward who was accused, who was accused to the man of wasting his resources. So he called him and said, How is it that I hear this about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you may no longer be steward. Harvest Note 1, we said this last week, the MSOG has to identify himself as a steward in the kingdom of light. We're talking about a discipline here where Curry uh, includes in his SWAT training of uh, being a steward, functioning as a steward as part of our discipline. And I, I left a copy of that out. I think everyone had, had taken one that was on the podium over there uh, from the SWAT manual with the nine disciplines that we need to be disciplined in doing to manifest kingdom. Okay. So the steward, a definition of a steward, we established this last week, a person who manages someone else's property, finances, or other affairs. Key word there, someone else's. Okay? That's the mindset we have to have as a steward in functioning in stewardship. It's someone else's. In other words, it's not my money. In other words, it's not my material. Okay? It's a blessing from God for me to manage, okay? I'm in his kingdom. He supplies everything I need in his kingdom, but I also look to help other people and bless other people, okay? So key word there, someone else's. That someone else's is the father, and it's his kingdom, and it is our inheritance. But what we have in the inheritance of the saints, going back to the Ephesians 1 power prayer, is we have the responsibility to manage his affairs, his finances his things, okay? So the MSOG, Manifested Son of God, needs to recognize that the money we have is a tool to be used to advance God's kingdom. Jesus said we will have to give an account of our stewardship. That's what he was teaching in this parable. He said, give an account of your stewardship. What's this I hear? Okay? That immediately checked me in my spirit. You know, as I continue to study this out, for you may no longer be steward. I don't want Jesus to say that to me. You may no longer be steward. Curry taught this in DBI. He said, he mentioned that God will fire you. He was talking about training up pastors. And if you're not feeding the sheep, God will, he will fire you. He will find someone else to. And when he said that to me, when I was going through DBI and learning this, I'm like, you know, what a responsibility you have, or, you know, pastor, teacher, but it's a believer. That just as a believer. What do you have, the responsibility you have, in manifesting his kingdom to people? Okay, it's a responsibility. When he, when he said, you'll, you'll be fired, and he was coming at the, the angle of you being a pastor and overseeing a congregation. Okay. God knows. So immediately I was like, wow, I've never heard quite heard like that before. Okay, but when you listen to Curry, you hear things that you say that all the time. All I've time. never heard like that before. All time. Okay. So, Harvest Note 2. God wants to be the source of everything in your life because you're in the kingdom of light. Okay? That's where He is. The Lord never intended us to carry the burden of financial responsibility. The reason why so many people are stressed out about money is they think that they are in control of their finances. People with an ownership mentality end up trying to do everything themselves. But stewards freely receive God's blessing. We said this last week, Harvest Note 3, a simple change in mindset from owner to steward makes a tremendous difference for you. Okay, that's where, as a manifested son of God, that's where we have to lose ownership and come into stewardship. And let's look at this scripture. It's in uh, Haggai 2 and 8, if you want to go there. And this scripture, you may have seen this one before, or heard it before, but it's one as a manifested son of God, and for us being disciplined in this area, we need to we need to have this scripture living in us. It'd be rooted in us. Haggai is right before the New Testament. Old Testament. Haggai two and verse eight.
talking about the future glory of the temple they're rebuilding. We are the temple of the living God. Okay. Verse 8. I'm just going to focus right on verse 8. They're going to attack verse 8. Eyes on verse 8. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. That settles it. The money's his. Our money's backed with gold. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. It's his. Whose is it? His. So my money's not his. My money's not mine. It's his. That scripture right there settles it. So there's our mind. That scripture, I'm showing you the scripture for a simple change in mindset. He owns it. It's his. I'm responsible for handling it and managing it. Okay? So big, big little scripture right there. Now last week we saw Galatians 3.29 when we went there. We'll go ahead, let's go there again. Right quick. Galatians 3.29. Set this back up again. Three twenty-nine. Saw this last week. God has a covenant with us in Jesus. Three twenty-nine. If you are Christ, which we are, then you are Abraham's seed. Who seed? Abraham's seed. So we're tied to who? Abraham, right? We're Abraham's seed, and we are heirs according to the promise. You see that word heirs? Remember, you have an inheritance, going back to Ephesians 1, power prayer, that you may know the glorious riches of his inheritance. Glorious riches of his inheritance. Back to that power prayer. Okay? You're an heir according to the promise. Well, what's the promise? We'll go to verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14. So that the blessing of Abraham might take the might out it's mine by faith I see it I got hope I see that scripture I got hope I'm blessed see I, how I read that I'm blessed I'm in I'm in it I'm in Christ I'm Abraham's seed I'm heirs according to the promise I the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ then we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith well I have received it <laughs> okay by faith I take it I see it. It's mine. The promise is mine. The blessing is mine. We saw in Hebrews last week where, where um, um, God told uh, Abraham, surely I'll bless you. Well, if he told that to Abraham, that belongs to me also because I'm Abraham's seed. And I have an inheritance to that promise. So I'm blessed also. That's our scripture. I'm blessed. Now, if I'm blessed, what? Therefore, I am rich because the blessing of the Lord makes you what? Rich. Let's look at that one. Go to Proverbs 10. Am I going too fast? No. Okay. I want to review this. But I want to still take my time and get this settled in us. Because I want us leaving here doing this and functioning as a steward. Okay? I don't want us leaving here and holding on to ownership. I want us leaving here functioning in stewards as a steward. Where does I go? Proverbs 10? Proverbs 10, 10. Thank you, Jacob. Yeah. Verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. Isn't that great? That is so good. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. It doesn't say money makes you rich. Money doesn't make you rich. The blessing of the Lord makes you rich. See? If you say money makes you rich, then your trust is in that money. You, you're owning that money if you're if you're thinking that way. The money doesn't make you rich. I, I learned this early on when I saw this, and then I got that Second Corinthians chapter eight uh, uh, verse that says, uh, "Through his poverty, Jesus' poverty, I've become rich." And I started speaking it right then. I'm rich. I went to work on that. I'm rich. I'm abundantly supplied. Rich means now I'm abundantly supplied. All my bills are paid. I can give offerings. I can give to this ministry. I can give to JGLM. I can help the poor. I can feed someone in the street. Everything's paid for. Okay? I'm abundantly supplied. I do not lack. Okay? Amen? Amen. Okay. We're established this here. Uh, Harvest Note 5. The blessing of God is not dependent on your performance or according to what you deserve. Ooh, now 
this is big here. Because some of us, some of we can get hung up here. The blessing of God is not dependent on your performance or according to what you deserve. And it can't be reversed. Okay? It's not according to what you deserve. You know, I look at my life. When I was 35, I had very little. But God didn't single me out and say, I'm going to bless you more than I'm going to bless James Yoder. It doesn't work that way. Not because, I, why do I deserve this blessing over James? Okay, well, I, that, I wouldn't even want to think that way. Hey, he blessed you more than he's blessing me, but I know I'll get mine eventually. Some people talk like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? No, we all have access. You all, we all have the same amount of access to the blessing. Okay? You just, we just need to take that might out by faith. You got the hope there for it. Take the might out by faith and confess it. Okay? And bring it in. Okay? Because when I was 35, I had very little. I had a car, and a 1980 console TV, clothes on my back, one pot, one pan, one fork, one knife, one spoon. That's basically what I had. Okay? I was 33, 34. 35. I'm 53 now. Okay, so about 20 years later, here's where I'm at. Okay. However, I thank God for it, but however, I praise God for it, I worked His Word. I worked His Word, and I gave. Okay, I worked His Word, and I gave. Give, and it will be given to you. Okay? I worked it. Okay, Jake. Uh, something that you were uh, sharing before the seed script, before the got into the message uh, was about us being formed to his son yes. um, see, I think that when we um, when we get formed into his dear son like the Bible says then the blessings will come then he will bless us. He will meet all our needs according to to us being formed. And you know, as as we uh, believe him and trust, you know, when we're formed to Jesus, when we become like him, then we will do. It's just that simple. And then the then we will be blessed. Then, that there's no difference between, you know, it, it shouldn't be any difference between the blessings from one brother or sister to another because we're all formed into the image it's of Christ. It's true. Amen? It's true. Amen. You see that? I see that. I see that. That's why, that's why Curry would say in teaching DBI, be blessed. Yeah. Just walk in it. Be blessed. We're not, yeah. I'm not waiting on a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Just become like Him. Just become like Him, yeah. Be yeah. blessed. Yeah. And as you go and do, He'll supply. Yeah. Okay? Right? As you step out, He'll supply. Ask. Okay? And as you go, ask. And what was Curry saying? That? He was, we were on that Friday night at DBI. Ask, and it will be given to you. You have not because you ask not. Right? Yes. Okay, look at this one. Go to Numbers uh, chapter 23. Numbers 23. We have a situation going on with Balaam and Balaam and Balak. Balak was kind of like freaking out because the Israelites were moving in. Okay? He heard about the Israelites. And, and he wanted this prophet to come and curse the Israelites. Balaam. And Balaam is, a, is, a, is given a prophecy here. And in verse 20, we want to focus this, because I said it cannot be reversed. Look at this in verse 20. <coughs> See, I have received, Balaam saying this, See, I have received the commandment to bless. And he, being God, has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. He's blessed the Israelites. Balak wanted to come and... and Balak wanted to hire Balaam to come and curse the Israelites, but the Israelites were blessed through Abraham. You're blessed in this covenant. It can't be reversed. Okay? 
It's just a matter of us receiving what he's already done. It's been done. We, we, we just receive it. It's a matter of us receiving it. Okay? Go to Romans 2 from there. Verse 11. Let's establish this and show you this. Romans 2. I'm getting some. Romans 2. We've got about 10 minutes. Romans 2. Okay. Romans 2, verse 11, verse 11, verse 10, but glory, honor, and peace will be to every man who does good work, to the Jew first, and then to the Gentile, for there's no partiality with God. <clears throat> Another translation, I believe, Carla, you got the NIV, I think it says there's no favoritism with God. So he doesn't favor me over Chris. He doesn't favor Chris over me. He doesn't favor Brother James over me. There's no favoritism. There's no partiality with him. King James is respect. He says what? King James is respect. Respect. He is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. God says, yeah. Let's look at another one, Acts 10. Very similar, Acts 10. Okay, we got to got to establish this teaching here. Acts 10. Because we all have access to the kingdom. The kingdom of God is yours. It's his pleasure to give you the kingdom. God is not holding back. Okay? He's not holding back. Amen. He's good God. Amen. Acts 10. <coughs> Jacob, verse 34. Then Peter began to speak saying truthfully I perceive that God is no respecter of persons there it is okay but verse 35 in every nation who fears him oh, there it is fear of the Lord and works righteousness is accepted by him there it is those two there's two right there fear him and you work righteousness is accepted by him Let's go a little further. Look at this, Psalm 115. Psalm 115. So he's not a respecter of person, he's a respecter of faith. It's, that's why without faith, it's impossible to what? Please him. So you have to operate in faith. But we know hope has to be in place too. Psalm 115. Can I share my translation? Yes, Sam. I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. Like that. There it is. Yeah. So if I say, Peter, Brother Peter, Samuel, boy, God has blessed you. Maybe one day he'll bless me as he's blessed you. What have I just done? Mm -hmm. it's like what have I just said? Oh, he loves you better. He loves you. Must love you. You must be. Uh, so must love me least. Yeah. Okay. There's something at the root here that we're going to get out of here before we, we stop here. And it's uh, Psalm 115. Something does have to be in place. He isn't a respecter of persons. We know that. We know he respects faith. Psalm 115. Verse 13. He will bless... Those who fear the Lord. There it is. Both the small and great ones. The small and the great ones. So if you're a little child that's small, if he or she fears the Lord, they're blessed. They're going to be blessed. He blesses those who fear the Lord. And remember, God is so awesome because when you got born again, the fear of the Lord's been deposited in you. We saw, we saw this. It's there. So for you to say, I don't fear the Lord, I have, don't have an awesome reverence for God, are you born again? Because it was placed in you, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. It's there, remember? We delight in the fear of the Lord. Because we delight in the fear of the Lord, we're blessed. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? God is so awesome. 
He places in you what you need to receive from Him. Think about that. He equips you so that you can do it. He's equipped me so that I don't look at any other woman because if I look at another woman with lust, I've just cheated on her. Because I've looked at her in lust. But I'm equipped so that I can not look at other woman in lust and I have a blessed marriage. Okay? Because there's an equipment, he's a God, there's a grace there for that. There's an empowerment there for that. Okay? To bring it to pass. See, Curry taught this in DBI. Jesus came and he raised the bar. He didn't lower the bar, he raised the bar. Remember we did a teaching on this back at the old building where Jesus said to them, remember I went through it, you've heard, but now I tell you. Remember that? You've heard, but now I tell you. You've heard it said this way, but now I say. What was Jesus doing? He was raising the bar. However, he raised the bar, but he also gave you the equipment so you could attain the bar. You can reach the bar. Does that make sense? He gave you the equipment so you can do it. Okay? He's not an unjust God. He's not going to say, do this, but yet not give you the means by which to do it. Okay? Curry taught that quite a bit too in DBI. Okay? Ooh, praise God. We seeing it? Yes. One more scripture. Let's look at this one. Uh, Psalm 112, the one I mentioned, just a page over. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Okay. We'll win. Two more scriptures here. We'll win. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed. Oh, Joyce. Blessed. Oh, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce. Joyce. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commands. His offspring shall be mighty in the land. Okay. That's David. That's Jacob. James, I mean, that's Jacob's kids, James and, and David. They're mighty in the land. They're his offspring. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in where? His house. Why? I fear the Lord. I delight in his commands. So fear of the Lord is a root here. The connection to where it flows through you. Do you see it? Where that wealth flows through you. The blessing flows through you. Why? Because you're in awe of God. You respect God. It's there. It's flowing through you. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. When I saw that, I was all over that. Not for me, but so I can bless people. Okay? So that I can bless people. Wealth and riches are in my house so I can bless people. Okay, well we see here with Wendy. We see it with her business. It's blessed business. We fear the Lord. They fear the Lord. Her and her partner fear the Lord. Okay? They stepped out. We know what happened. I've told it many times. All right? But we stayed on the Word. We stayed after it. Some of y'all encouraged me, and I needed it. We needed it that hard, through that time. And we stayed together. We were family. We went right through it. We reverenced the Lord. Okay? And He supplies our needs. And He supplies, you know. Okay? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Joe, Joe, you knew all about all that. Yeah. So I had hope. Harvest 05. I had hope for wealth when I found Psalm 112. you got to remember our efforts, Harvest 06 will end here, our efforts are not the source of our prosperity in our life. It's not by my effort. Okay? It's not about me. It's about, it's about just having a reverence for God. Okay? Okay? I, I, I had a hope for wealth when I, when I, like I said, when I saw Psalm 112. But my efforts are not my source of my prosperity in my life. Let's look at Genesis and we'll be done. Genesis. I'll give you an example of it. Verse 13. This is, uh, I think Jacob shares this one quite a bit. Genesis 13. Genesis 13. Verse 8 and 9. This is Abram. Abram. He's Abram at the time. 
He says to Lot, his nephew, okay, our men are fighting amongst each other. Okay, we have all this cattle, we have all this, they've been multiplied, and they had to separate. Verse 5. Genesis 13, verse 8, I'm sorry. So Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife. So you don't want to have strife with his nephew. They need to separate. Lot needs to take his people and go. And Abraham needs to take his, his, his family and his people and go. I ask you, between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are close relatives, is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you will go to the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right, then I'll go to the left. Okay, so he was telling Lot, hey, you choose because no matter what I choose, wherever I go, I'm going to be blessed. Just where I go, I'm going to be blessed. It doesn't matter. So you choose. If you choose, you know, Lot, Lot chose the best land. He chose the green land with the, with the water for his herd. He chose the better land. Abraham got a little bit of a desert land, but Abraham still he saw God. He prospered because he saw God as his source. Okay? So let me say this to you. What your situation looks like, okay, you can't go by the natural circumstance. You say, I'm blessed. Okay? Where I go, I'm blessed. See, our attitude's got to be, kingdom is in me. Where I go, I'm blessed. Right? Where I step, the kingdom steps. Wherever I go, I'm blessed. I can go work at this place, the place is going to be blessed. I can go work at that place, that place is going to be blessed. Whatever I put my hands to prospers. You start a business, start a business, it's prospering. Okay? Why? Because the word says whatever you put your hands to prospers. Right? So you speak it. Whatever you decide to do. You go, you go, and you speak. I'm blessed, this is going to prosper. Okay? You getting it? Right. Okay? You, again, Abraham was walking in what he knew. Okay? We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the Spirit of Jesus in us. But he was walking and he knew and he had confidence in God because God told him, surely I'll bless you. Okay? Saying the same to us, surely I'll bless you. So when the devil tries to stir up the circumstance, don't bite on it. Okay? Don't get into that darkness. Okay? Don't start cussing, fussing, and get all... Okay? The devil's just got you out of light. Okay? got to stay put where we're at. Stay on the Scripture, stay the Scripture, confess the Scripture. Okay, let God bring it to pass. Okay? You see, um, something that Lot did here was mm -hmm. in the flesh. Yes. See, um, later, it came back and bit him. Yes. And That's he, good, yes. <laughs> That's good. It did. It came back and did him. Yeah. Go so ahead. Everything that he had That's got right. destroyed. Yeah. Everything he had did get destroyed. Exactly. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good, Jacob. Okay, we see him again. So, so if you want to know what I'm talking about, you've got to read this after, after this. <laughs> yeah. But you know, there's something else. Yeah, homework. But if you look at verse 14, because Lot, he said to Lot, you choose, God's going to bless me, because Abraham thought of someone else before him, and Curry taught on this Friday night, because he thought of someone else before him, look what God come back and did for him. Look at verse 14. After Lot had departed from him, the Lord said to Abraham, Lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. All the land that you see I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants could also be numbered. Arise and walk throughout the land across its length and its width, for I will give it to you. So he said, I'm going to take this section. And then Abraham said, don't matter. All right, I'll take this section. Then God shows up and said, because you did that, okay, I'm going to give you it all. Did you just see that? Yes. I'm going to bless you with it all. All of it's yours. Look to the north, the west, the south, the east. He just multiplied Abraham there. But Abraham thought a lot first. He said, you go ahead and choose. I know God is going to bless me. 
Look at the confidence he had in God. God's going to bless me. So he put his confidence out there, and then what happened? God said, everything's yours. He got blessed. He got blessed more. Yeah. Okay? Amen. Stewardship. Functioning in stewardship. To be continued next week. Okay? All right? Yeah. Before we close in prayer, uh, a couple announcements. Uh, Orville Red Life Team meets Tuesday night, uh, December 5th. It's the only time we're meeting this month. Um, if you can make it there, again, that's the, the, the mission there is to teach, uh, to reach out mission there. For Joyce, uh, it's basically we call it her life team, the Orville Life Team. And she runs, if you can make it there, uh, we are renting that building out. So there's a purpose there. Uh, we do pay rent for that building. For us not to use it, I still pay the rent, okay, so to speak. So it is a, a, a training facility for us. Keep that in mind. Wadsworth Point, I'll be there uh, December 6th, this Wednesday night, 6.15 to 7. DBI will be back here December 8th, this Friday night, 7 o'clock, again going through prayer. We will take a look at Session 3 again. It was so good, we're going to look at it again. Okay, Session 3. Amen. And then we're going to meet for two more Friday, one more Friday night, and then we'll meet again in January. Okay, so we got this week, this Friday, and then the following Friday here, and then we'll uh, meet again in January. Okay. Christmas Eve service, yes, it's a Sunday night. I'll get that on the uh, welcome sheet next week. Five o'clock Sunday night. Well, our Sunday service will be that service. 